Oh, Belvedere! Come here, boy! Hello, everybody. Welcome to my channel, and thank you for joining. Now, if you watched our last video, which was the team meeting, we discussed Setterfield. We dressed him up. We sent him away. We sent him to McDonald's. We, 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 we thought that we got rid of him. Things have changed. Just come it down. He's back. Setterfield is back in the club. Can you believe this? We can't get rid of him. Just come it down. Okay, so Setterfield is back. I'm going to explain to you why in a minute. But it's a shock. The players don't want to talk to him. They're all upset. Anyway, let's continue. Now, before we get on with the show, we have a small announcement. Just come down. Uh, I have a subscriber. His name is Luke. The young man out there, he's watching right now. He watches all my shows. I've actually done the uh, Foghorn, Leghorn um, start just for him. Because I love the boy. He's a good boy. Now, I'm going to wish him all the best of luck. Let me show you something. Now, see this team here at number four, owned by Luke. That's his team. He's going nuts. He's having a sensational year. Now, I'm going to I'm gonna be wishing that Luke wins it this year. He's my boy. Uh, I want Luke to win. Come on, Luke. You can do this, okay? Now, uh, if you can't do it, Luke, it's okay. Because you've done us proud by getting this far, okay? Because a lot of pressure coming up. I've been through it. I know how much pressure there is. So don't worry too much now. You've achieved you achieved a mountainous effort just to get here. Okay? It's it's sensational. You've done so well for yourself, young man. Okay, and um keep up the good work. And if you have a, any questions, um ask your dad. He's very good. Okay, he's a very smart boy, very smart cookie your dad is, okay? And um and he'll help you out. And uh We'll try our best to help you out as well. We're all, we're all rooting for you, Luke. You can do this, okay? Just come down. All right, let's continue. We need to go through all the ins and outs this week, all the team sheets. First game up is Richmond and Geelong. Now, things to take note of at Richmond, okay, is that they, they don't have a Ruckman still. So, Samson Ryan uh, may still be making some cash. Uh, this good news for the owners, okay, he's going to, uh, I wish I got him, <laughs> unbelievable miss I had on him, but anyway, he's going to keep making cash, uh, Tyler Young is an emergency, uh, he won't be a sub because it's going to be Clark or, or Sonzi, so Young's out, now at Geelong, uh, we've lost Danger, he's gone, now Danger's been replaced uh, in the midfield. By well, you got in the centre. You got Atkins. Tom Atkins is, is in there. Okay, uh, Max Holmes is in there now, and Blickhoff. So you got a few of the big boys. Uh, the bargain prices, but do you get them in? Okay, would you would you get in a Tom Atkins or a, or a Holmes or a Blickhoffs? My answer is no, uh, because. It's only short term. I mean, if it was fantasy, yeah, because you can trade in you unlimited trades. But in super coach, I mean, if you get any player you bring in now, you're keeping them. So what what happens when when uh, later on when, when you get Tom Atkins, and then uh, all of a sudden Danger's back in the team, he plays back in defence, or Max Holmes goes back on the wing. So, and then there's not enough cash for them to make uh, for it to be viable. So I would say no. Uh, not, I wouldn't bring them in. Anyway, uh, plus they got a few rookies coming in now as well. Who, who came in this week? Well, Joy Clark uh, looks like he's going to be a sub uh, playing on debut, so his price will be cheap uh, when it comes to his uh, bubble, so you wouldn't even get him in the bubble now. And it looks like um, Nevet is... They put him on the wing, so we'll, we'll see where he plays. He might play in the midfields. Uh, Gold Coast, uh, well... Look who's still playing, okay? Now, McAndrew's come into the team. This is actually bad, okay? If you own... Uh, where is he? If you own Atkins, now, McAndrew's in the team. This is actually not good news because on the wings, they have Ellis and Fiorini. So the question now becomes, where does Weller play when he comes back? Weller's going to replace one player, okay? And it's not going to be Lemons. And it's not going to be Collins. It's not going to be Ballard. McPherson or Powell, it's going to be McAndrew or it's going to be Atkins. One of the two is you have to go go uh, make way for Weller. Now, 
Atkins's worry was McAndrew. Now he's eaten, but Atkins still held his spots. But that spot's only there for one player. It can't be for both of them. So um, next week, uh, when Weller comes back, uh, I'm expecting um, Atkins or McAndrew to drop out. Although, Awea, okay, I think that's how you say it. Um, he might be out, so I'm not sure. We'll see how it goes. Now, at West Coast, Chester didn't get a game. <laughs> it could be a sub again. I can't believe this. Okay, so we're not going to pick Chester. Not interested in Chester no more, okay? He's still going to be cheap. We can still get him cheaper, maybe, than his price right now. Okay, let's move on. Now, actually, let's go back to Gold Coast, okay? Uh, now, West Coast, uh, well, the coach has said now that they're going to tag um, my boy. Uh, Anderson's going to get tagged. So if Anderson cops a tag, uh, how much is it? What's he going to score? Okay, well, probably 130 anyway because the tags come from Gimby. He's not a very good tagger. How's Gimby going to chase Anderson all day? Let me show you something. Anderson, time on ground, is roughly around about 85%. That's that's uh, very normal. It's a, good, it's a good amount for a midfielder that runs all day because Anderson runs all day. 37 touches, 32 touches. He gets a lot of the ball, okay? So he's a hard runner. Now, what happens when Gimby's chasing him all day? How much time on ground does Gimby have? Let's have a look. Gimby's tank stops at 64%. His maximum is 72%. Actually, he's at 97% as well. Maybe he has got a tank. Anyway, it, well, recently he hasn't had... His tank hasn't been there, so maybe he does have a tank. But the problem is, when you're chasing someone all day, uh, he's, he's not going to go 85%. He's, he's going to go slow motion. Anyway, let's see how that tag goes. Now, speaking of Anderson, I don't even know if I can get him now because I've got other problems. I'm going to show you. Now, let's, go, let's move over to Sydney versus Frio. Now... Fife is out again. Most likely he's a sub. Okay, this is... Fife's price is going to drop under 250. This is awesome. I'm going to pick him up for about 200k. Okay, this is a dream come true. He's going to be my... um. Because by the time... After round 14, uh, when you need a spare player, Fife's not going to play one quarter. He's going to play four quarters. He may score 70s or 80s. But as a spare player, 70s or 80s for a 200k player is awesome. We're not going to get him to make cash for us. He's just going to be our spare, okay? Because we're going to need a spare in case of one-week injuries, like what's happened this week, which I'll show you in a minute. Okay, let's let's move on. Now, actually, going back to Sydney, uh, McAndrew, uh, he could actually be the sub in case they're going to sub out. Um, uh, where, where is he? Tom Hickey. Because Tom Hickey's first game back, he might not have a full game. He's playing as Darcy. It's not an easy game. So um, he might not have a... Plus, they're playing as two Ruckman. Tom Hickey's just come back from injury. Uh, I have a feeling that um, McAndrew might come back, uh, might be a sub, and just play just to help out Hickey, which then means that um, Darcy could go nuts against McAndrew later on. So we'll see how that goes. Well, at least the last quarter anyway. Okay, let's continue now. Port Adelaide and North Melbourne. Now, North, nothing interesting here. Uh, the, the only good thing here is... Uh, Drury is still playing, okay, so that's a, that's a good thing, and he's playing the half-forward line, so um, we get to see another week of Drury, okay, and hopefully he stays in, because the coach said that he's going to push 40 games into him, 40 or 60, so they want to give him some time, and uh, there's no um, no Aaron Hall yet, so that means uh, our boy here, is he's going to go nuts, <laughs> where is he, Jack Zebel, he's, he's going to go bananas again, anyway, let's continue, Actually, uh, I'll come back here. Uh, the emergencies here, Lockie Jones and Kane Farrell. Now, uh, Williams has been playing in defence. Now, Farrell uh, was... Williams replaced Farrell in defence. So, Farrell's back. I'm not sure if he's 100% fit. Uh, so, Williams could be... Um, if you're going to pay 240k for Williams, I'd be very careful because these two are back. Okay, just come down. Now... Uh, Hawthorne versus Melbourne. Look at the changes. They, they've gone bananas. Okay, they've changed the whole team. They're all out. 
Scrimshaw, Brockman, or he's, he's suspended. The whole team's out. Now, the interesting one here, uh, Gia is back. they got two defenders in, Blanc and Gia. They both come in, yet we don't lose Weedle or Mitchell. They both stay. This is a really good sign. Uh, so uh, we we might see uh, Weedle even move to the half-back line, okay, and um, and go for a bit of a dash, a bit of a run, maybe or even on the wing. See how that goes out, see how that pans out there, just coming down. You know, that's a good news for the Weedle owners, or if you're going to pick up Weedle, job security seems a bit more secure. Um, who, who can replace him? Possibly Scrimshaw. Uh, the rest aren't going to replace him, so this, this is interesting. Anyway, let's move over to the next game. Actually, let's talk about Melbourne. Uh, JVR now is back in the team. Now his break even is 59. Uh, the only good thing now is, uh, even though it's 59, um, I'm going to discuss this in a minute, but the um, the magic number has not dropped. It's actually gone up. All right. Normally the magic number drops at this time of the year. It drops right down to about 5. It's gone up. Uh, so players' values are going up, which means the rookies' prices are going up. So Van Ruyen... Uh, even though he may score, uh, let's say, a 50 this week, he'll actually make money next week because his value is higher because the magic number is high. So even, even if he doesn't get his break, even this week, he can still go up. But besides that, I'm still going to trade him out. Just come down. All right. Now, next, we move over to the Lions and Essendon. This is the big one. Darcy Parrish is out. Uh, well, we knew that Ridley was going to be out, but Parrish is out. And Durham is in. Now, Durham is a winger on the wing, okay? You know, they got their two wingers. they got Martin and Durham on the wing. So what does this mean? Well, this means now uh, that Setterfield is in the midfield. I can't get rid of him. I'm stuck again. Okay, he's got Setterfield. He's got to break him with a 109. He could probably get it. Unless he's going to tag. Uh, but this, this is crazy. I can't believe I'm going to hold him again. We're stuck with him, just coming down. All right, so Cedarfield's back in the team. And and Essendon's run. Uh, let me show you something. Essendon's next one, two, three, four games before their bye, okay? Richmond, okay, well, Richmond let, uh, don't tag. Or forget tagging, that they concede a lot of points. West Coast, okay, they're going to concede some points. North Melbourne, and then Carlton. You could almost hold Setterfield until his buy round. And that's nuts. His price could even go up to 400k. His price actually going to go up. And looks, if he scores 70s, his price actually goes up, not down. This is nuts. Well, it does go down because of a big loss here. But he's going to go more than 70s. In the midfield, he's going to score more than 70s. Uh, as a, I mean, he was going 80s. Okay, 99, 147, the first two rounds in the midfield. Uh, he's not going to go 70s. I mean, against Collingwood, uh, he went 76. That was a bad game, okay? That was um, in the midfield. But that's his worst game, okay? Because th these other two games were not in the midfield, so you can't count these. He can actually go 80s or 90s, even 100s. I'm going to have to hold him. Just come with the L. Okay, let's continue. Now, we move over to Carlton and, uh, and the Dogs. Now, Ed Kerno's out, okay, omitted. Uh, now, the interesting one here, Carlton, is this boy here, Kennedy, okay? Let me show you his, um, let me show you his potential. And now, he's lost 155k, all right? Break even of 152. The next two weeks, he's going to cop it. Well, probably even more. He's always been a sub. He's going to cop it hard. He's going to be down about 320k. Uh, in round 10, uh, he'll go 100. Like, these, these are scores that he gets as a midfielder, 96, 110. Uh, he can go 100 easily. This could be uh, the perfect option uh, to, to pick up a player in round, let's say round, round 11, then playing for one, two, three, four weeks. You're playing for round 11 to four weeks. He can go up to about 500k again. Especially if the magic number's high. Even 450k. He's going to make you about 100k, 150k. 
Okay, so keep an eye on Mac, keep an eye on Kennedy now. Okay, just for a bit. next two games. Don't get him now. It's too early. It'll wait two games and then keep an eye on him. See how he goes. Then we'll we'll reassess. Just come it down. Okay, let's continue. Well, and the good news here is that Chincotta has held his spot. Where is he? Well, he's on the bench, but he's he's kept his spot. We're gonna make some cash. Just come it down. Now let's let's move over to the next game. Now Adelaide. Well, Semeniti is back. And they put it straight on the field in the forward pocket. Okay, so we've got Sam Neti back. Some more cash coming. And an Adelaide Crows. Was there anything exciting in Adelaide? Well, not really. It's the usuals. Okay, nothing nothing too exciting here. Just coming down. Now, uh, GWS. Well, it's not, not for me, but for the owners. Angwin is, has kept his spot. He had an ankle injury. He still kept his spot. That's a huge good sign for you guys. That own him, so Angwin's in still. So hopefully he scores well, and uh, and at Collingwood, well, there's nothing, no big changes here. Okay, same same. Next week at Collingwood, we want to have Darcy Cameron back. See what happens. Anyway, let's continue with my team. Everything's gone upside down. Uh, I'm I'm in confusion land right now. Very confusion. Okay, and now uh, what I'm gonna do? Okay, we're gonna have to um. I don't know if I should hold him. If I hold Van Ruyen, all right. If I hold Van Ruyen, if he scores a 50, it's still okay because he's going to go up in value. He's going to lose maybe 2.8k. Two, 2. He's only playing Hawthorne. So Van Ruyen could be a, a good, maybe to keep him. Such a tough decision this week, okay. So one of these two have to go out, all right. Now, if Young is going to be the emergency, uh, and they got they got um, a few players that come back. Richmond do so. I'm gonna trade Young out. That's one. Okay, so Young is out. Now who do, who else do we trade out? There's no one left. We need to trade one more. Uh, well, it's either gonna be Davy. What's Davy's break even? It's forty five. He can have one big game and, and build up his um, cash as well. And he's got some good games coming, Richmond, West Coast, North. I'm going to have to hold him. Okay, we'll hold Davey. Probably going to take out Cowan. Take these two outs. Okay, Davey and Cowan both gone. Let's push Mitchell down there into defence. Let's bring in another defender, Hawthorne, under three games. Let's bring in Weedle. Let's make the cash. Okay, so Weedle comes in. Let's now move Taranto into the forward line. Okay, so we're going to bring in the mid. Uh, St Kilda. Players I can afford. Average. It's going to be Steel. Okay, we're going to pass on Anderson now. Can't get him. Uh, we're going to bring in my boy Steel. And complete the trades. Now, I could bring in Steel. Okay, I can bring in, I've had this conversation many times with many people. I can bring in Steel, that's option one. I can bring in Mills. Okay, let's, if we bring in Mills, right, let me, let's do some research now. If we bring in Mills, Mills is another option. I don't mind Mills. Okay, now Mills, let's put him in there. He's lost a lot of value as well. Now, the problem with Mills all right, is that Sydney aren't playing like they were playing last year, okay? He's lost 120k. Break-even's 116, still high break-even. Hasn't really done much, okay? Um, 87, 97, 98, it's not much. Okay? Even last week, 100, it's not, it's not enough still. He's still going to go down. Uh, I, can't see, I can't see the positives in bringing, in, um, bringing him in. Uh, not yet, it's still early. Uh, I haven't seen his role, uh, I want to see him play midfield pure. I saw his... Let me show you his heat map. I'll show you something. Now, last week, Mills had 31 touches. Weeks previous to that, he's had 25, 14, 21, 21, 25, 28, 19. Not much, okay? Last week, he had a big game. 31 touches last week. He only scored 100 points. That's, that's stuff to get, to get excited about, Okay. And he had 63% CBAs. He went at 81% disposal efficiency. 31 touches at 81%. And he scored 100 points. Now have a look at the heat map. Most of his touches 
Okay, this is, is this his heat map? It's, that's a midfield. That's not a midfield heat map. That's a defensive heat map. He's playing a defensive midfield role. He starts in the CBA. He goes into the defence. Uh, and most of his disposals will be easy kicks. They'll be like handball receives, just a kick. He's not doing much. Um, I'm going to pass on him. I'm not interested. 31 touches for 100 points. You've got to be kidding me. Okay, uh, no, no interest. Because let me show you something else. Let me show you Steele. Now, Steele had 20 touches last week. Not much, just 20. He had 28 the week before. 28 touches. He scored 129. I'm 126. 20, that's 28 touches. Uh, the week before, against Carlton, he only had 42% CBAs. Had 19 touches. He didn't do much. Uh, it was going at 58% disposal efficiency. But even at 28 touches, 75 disposal efficiency, he lays tackles, 11 tackles, 7 tackles. Uh, he, he's he's going to score more points. He gets all the hard balls, even though uh, Mills does as well, still has a knack for scoring a lot more points, uh, for not doing much. Wait till he does something. So I'm going, I mean, the heat map... It doesn't show much. He played more forward last week, okay? Uh, he actually spent time at, time in the forward line. Had he spent all that time in the midfield, he would have gone nuts. He scored 70 points in the second half. Uh, and and this week, they brought in Samaniti's back. So they don't need him in the forward line. Samaniti's there now. So he'll play more time in the midfield. Yeah, he's my boy, Jack Steele. I mean, ideally, I would love Anderson to come in. But I can't get him now. You can see my team. It's impossible. How am I going to get Anderson when I'm, when I'm going to keep Setterfield now? It's impossible. I might just take out the rookies out. So take him out. All right. And Brayshaw, I'm not even going to look at. I'm not interested in Brayshaw. Okay. I've had friends that own him. <laughs> they traded him out. And he scored 140. The minute they traded him out. I don't, want, I don't want to smash guitars with owning him. So it's going to be Steel. Okay. Steel's my boy. Now, the problem here becomes next week, I've got a huge problem. Uh, where's Steel? All right, bring in steel, lock him in, complete trade. Okay, now this week, uh, showing you something. Now this week we're actually quite good. Uh, we've only got Sincara and Ashcroft as the two rookies on fields. Uh, Setterfield is a primo this week. He's going to he's going to midfield. We're giving him a promotion. He, okay, so hopefully he does something good. He makes himself useful, but. Sincara and Ashcroft, the only two rookies on field, but we only got 28k left, and Darcy Cameron's going to be back. So Darcy Cameron, uh, if Ashcroft has a shocker, all right, so he's back even 71. If he has a shocker and only scores, uh, where is it? Okay, if he scores a 70 odd, the following week if he scores a 70 again, he, he still goes up in value, but I'll, I'll get rid of him. Okay, if it's a 70 odd from Ashcroft this week, he's gone. He's going to become Darcy Cameron. Okay, that's the deal. Just come it down. Okay, let's continue. Now, there is one way I can still bring in Anderson. Only one way. And I'll show you the way, okay? Uh, it's going to be Young out. All right, so Young goes out. Uh, we're going to push Mitchell into defense. We're going to push Taranto over here. Take Ruin out. And we're going to push Davey into the forward line. And we're going to bring in the North Melbourne boy uh, under three games, Drury, all right, which gives us 623k left. And then we can bring in Anderson. Okay, so that's the only way we can do this. So if we complete this trade, we bring in Anderson. Now, what happens if we do this? Okay, so then we can push Drury on the bench. Okay, so we're still good. It means that we miss out on, on Weddle, okay, or Weedle, whatever his name is. Okay, it's coming down. So this is still an option if we want to have Anderson. Um, now, this is the only option, the only way I can do it, and I don't know if I want to do this. Because next week... Darcy Cameron is available, all right? And he has a break-even of 53. So virtually, we need to get him now. We're playing the money game, okay? We're playing the uh, the stock market game. We're trying to buy low and sell high. And um, if we're going to buy, if we're going to wait another week to get Darcy Cameron the week after, 
it's not going to work out. So how much cash do we have left if we were to get Darcy Cameron in next week? Can we, can we get him in next week? Let's find out. Well, let's get the calculator out. We need 494k plus we need 123k for another rookie. So that equals 617. We need 617k. All right, let's take away. Uh, who can we take out? Let's take away. Well, Samaniti. What's he going to be? What's his break here? Let's say he's going to be 240k. Okay, let's say it goes up to 240. So 240 minus. Ashcroft, well, Ashcroft needs to go to 377, so it can be done, okay? Ashcroft needs to go to 377 uh, for it to be done. Otherwise, it can't be done. So, um, mind you, 72 needs to go up by 11K. How much was his break even? 22. Actually, he can, he can do it. We can actually do it. If he goes up by 15K, so it's going to be touch and go, okay? It's going to be very close. And But, mind you, if he goes, uh, if he scores a 56... We're going to miss out on a lot of cash coming up. But then again, you're going to save on the cash that Darcy Cameron uh, is going to um, be making. So it's an option. Uh, but it's going to be touch and go. It's going to be very close. Actually, I didn't add the 18K. Did I add the 18K in? I don't know if I did. Let's have a look. Let's start again. We might make this 373 plus 18 plus... Uh, what was the other one? Uh, two hundred. Just say two, two, two forty-five equals. We can do it. Okay. We have an option. Just come with down. Okay. Let's continue. Now, the advantage of bringing Noah Anderson, okay, is his breaking is nine, right? He has a score of one eighty-nine in his scoring cycle. So with a break-in of even of 9 and a 189 in a scoring cycle, that 189 stays for two more weeks. Now, the magic number has gone up, okay? So um, uh, the more he scores, the more he makes now. So if he scores a 122, he makes 51K. Uh, that's a 122. If he scores a 150, uh, between the two weeks... He'll go up 100k in two weeks. Now, if he goes up 100k, he's going to be 700k. You now have an option to actually trade him out uh, for the dogs game. You guys should trade him out because uh, Miller comes back anyway. You made a quick 100k. You can trade him out and bring in Oliver. Now, this is an option, okay? I'm actually so confused what I want to do because making 100k off any rookie is hard enough. You're going to make it off a primo, scoring 150s. This is nuts. That's if you want to trade him out, because if he's that good, you might as well keep him. So it's an option, and, and I'm actually considering it now. Um, it's a very good option. Let's continue. Now, on Twitter, um, I put up a little tweet. I said here, Abs Magic has revealed its round 15 plan to its members. This is what I showed on Twitter. This was my plan for my end team. All right, this is what I'm hoping for. Now, if we can lock in Anderson this week and also can lock in Cameron next week, we've only got three players left and and the dream team is done. I mean, lucky Neil, I don't have to get, okay? I can still keep Josh Kelly and I can actually get, I can actually move Taranto with Coniglios and get lock, lucky Neil over Coniglios if Neil keeps dropping down in price and Coniglios can just do a bit of work and go up in price, um, I can actually do a switch with Lockie Neil and Coniglios if I have to. But it's it's an option I want to do in round 15, not now anyway, so it doesn't matter now. Uh, plenty of time to, for that to happen. So this is the plan. This is my this is my end team, what I want, to, what I, what I want it to become. Um, I just need, um, well, this is going to either be Ryan or Stuart here. I'm not sure who will want. Um, Lockie Neil... Doesn't have to be there. Could be Josh Kelly still there, okay? And I might, I might just switch Neil with Coniglios, or I may even put Tuk Miller. I might even bring Tuk Miller instead of Coniglios. So there's another option. Something to think about anyway. But um, this is my plan, my dream. Just come with me on. Uh, and it's very possible, because I don't need much. This is going to be Hopper 
and uh, Setterfield's uh, money. So they've got a lot of money already in them. Lead's dropping in price. Hopper's going up in price. Hopper to lead is only about 100k. It's not much difference. Anyway, um, let's continue. Well, the decision has been made. Anderson is in. We don't have to get... Um, this is incredible. I could bring in Anderson and still keep Setterfield with the cash I had. And I could still bring in Darcy Cameron next week. Now, the only thing that I miss out on is Weedle. That's the only thing. So I miss out on Weedle, and, but I get a different rookie uh, next week. So is it that big of a loss? I mean, I'm bringing in Anderson, who might make 100k anyway. Weedle may not even make 100k. So I think it's a good deal. And, um, and Anderson is a pod. No one's going to bring Anderson this week. Uh, it's nearly, well, some people will, but it's not that easy, okay? So, um, yeah, especially with Setterfield now, uh, they're not going to trade Setterfield out. It'll be crazy to trade him out. He's going to um, he's going to boost up in price again. Anyway, this is this is the plan. Let's see how it goes. And if you have any questions, as usual, I'm happy to answer as much as I can. Just come down. Uh, if I'm a bit slow, okay, I'll try to answer as much as I can eventually. That's it for today. Thank you for joining. And remember one thing. It's nice to be important, but it's important to be nice. Ciao for now. That's all, folks.